So, what we're trying to say here is that there's nothing wrong with being financially successful. You know, and a lot of times, at least in the da'wah in the United States, many times what the problem with it is that there's no money, especially in the old days. Now communities are growing and they understand responsibilities, things like that. But in the old days there was problems. How many times there were some phenomenal projects we just needed a righteous and successful, yani, dunya-wise, person like Uthman radiallahu to come and say, look, what do you need? 50,000 to distribute this material and to, and to advertise on radio, TV? Here it is. There we go. But no, brothers, we need this, we need that. What would you say if I told you a lot of du'a are like beggars? And for the most part, for the longest time, people involved in da'wah are like beggars, always needing money, always asking, always begging, pleading. Is this something that people should beg for? But suppose these people were, you know, had a, you know, successful businesses or had good degrees. Is there any problem there? So I just want to make sure if any young people in the audience think that, well, oh, this is not going to count in the next life and so on. No, you can make it count in the next life. You can take whatever you want with you to the next life. Can you take your house with you to the next life? Who says yes? Who says no? Who doesn't know? Okay. And who's just not here at all? <laughs> can you take your house with you to the next life? Can you take your car with you to the next life? Okay, you can. I'm going to show you how. Okay. Just like if you want to take, uh, you know, well, you guys have British pounds. It's a respected currency. But suppose you guys had some flimsy uh, currency, right? And you want to take it to another country. You can't use it there unless you convert it into a currency that will work there. So I can take my laptop with me to the next life if I want to. I just have to convert it into a currency that will work there. What currency works in the next life? Hasanat, reward. So I can convert my laptop in a number of ways to, for, into reward, right? I can do good work with it. I can do da'wah work with it. I can donate it to the masjid. I can sell it and give the money here and there. You understand where we're going with this? So you can take things with you to the next life. Yeah? So you're, for the righteous Muslim, okay, the righteous young man, the righteous woman, when they are successful in this life, it inshallah naturally will translate into good things for the next life as well. Because we're not talking about some, you know, some punk loser, you know, celebrity who's a millionaire and he's just he's going to use his wealth to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. We want the righteous people to be millionaires who will use their wealth properly for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Relief, bam, check comes out. Some project, ready. So we do want both successes in case anyone was confused. Be a righteous person and be successful in this life as well. And many times. Even because we have this thought, it's very predominant in our society, but because it's so predominant that we, we actually expect the Imam to have a broken up car, okay? To live in a busted up apartment. Uh, do you guys expect that? I hope it's, that's not the case in the UK. But in the US, for example, people want the Imam to drive a 1980s Camry. And it's always an 87 Camry. And it has holes in it from the rust, okay? And it smells that car. That's the Imam's car. I personally know an imam who bought a luxury car, luxury SUV. You call them SUVs here? Four, four by four, is that what you call them? Yeah. Fantastic. He had a four by four. And in, when he bought it, how, what, what kind of an imam drives a nice car? So you, what's happening here? We accept for everyone else to be respected and respectable, except for the guy who works for Allah. Oh, you're a doctor? Oh, no wonder. That explains the Mercedes. You're an engineer? Oh, that explains the Porsche. But you're an imam, and you're driving a nice car? I'm sorry, I'm confused here. Why? Because the one who works for Allah, he should you know, treat him like dirt, kick him all Who cares? He works for Allah, Azawajal. You kick him. Open the door, kick him out. Let him stand out in the cold. He works for Allah. The guy who works for Allah should be respected more than anybody else. But we want our imam to have a busted up car. So some people start to accuse that man of stealing from the masjid. Why? Because he has a nice car. Everyone else can have a nice car in the community. No one will accuse him of stealing. But the Imam? Ah, why does he have a nice car? Yeah. So the, what message are we send, sending our youth? Be a doctor, drive a Mercedes. Be an Imam, 1987 Camry. It's a good future for you. A young man looks at both cars like, I'll become a doctor, inshallah. I'll still be a good guy and pray, but I don't want to be like this guy. Yeah? So, another time, uh, one imam, he bought a car. It was a Mercedes, right? He's an imam, he's young, but he bought a Mercedes. One of the board members of the masjid comes to his house and sits with him and says, how could you buy a nice car? He actually said this to him. He said, 
You should be a role model and drive a busted up car. Wait a minute, role model? I should drive a busted up car? Okay, when I had a busted up car, did you sell your car and drive a busted up car? No. How am I role model then? This is a very strange mentality. So where, yani, the guy who works for Allah, for Allah, kick him in the teeth, it doesn't matter. He works for Allah. <laughs> Look at him. He works for Allah. You work at McDonald's, they respect you more. You get injured working at McDonald's, they pay for you, they take care of you until you come back to... You work, uh, you work for Allah, as you fall from a ladder getting some da'wah books from the top shelf, they're like, Hafiz Allah, brother. Carry his broken, mangled body outside, you know. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Akhi? Alright, so I hope we're all in agreement here. Yes? You serious people? We're all in agreement that we, we want the best of both worlds. So if you're a, a, an, an up-and-coming religious brother, yes, get good, good, good grades, get A's, okay? Oh no, no, because I have a beard over three inches long, I'll just get C's, inshallah, because you know, this dunya. No, Habibi, get good grades, work hard, become successful in both, inshallah. But if you're religious and successful, inshallah, that money will be, will be used to take you into paradise.